Hey guys, uh, my name is Matt from Neobly Viscaris. I'm Benji from Neobly Viscaris. And we're going to show you the few gear we use live. Yeah, let's start with what we actually have in common. So, the whole sound that you hear comes from that, the Fractal Audio AX8. We have been using the Fractal Audio uh, Axefix Ultra for a couple of years, and we just recently upgraded to these ones, like literally a few, a few days, days ago. ago. Yeah. So they're still pretty new, we're still yeah. tweaking stuff as we go, just we haven't really got a controlled area where we can dial in our, our tones properly, we just use the uh, yeah. PAs yeah. just wherever we go. So, still yeah, but it, it's, a, it's really great, it's just very easy and that's everything. We just rock on stage, plug it, play, go. So you imagine the, into the, PA. the time you can save at festivals and things like that. Just an expression pedal, and that's it for us, really. We, uh, we've only used three different tones, mainly, because uh, that's all we've been dialing in this few days. So there's like a, a rhythm one, for heavy, just the metal and most of what we're going to play through. A clean one, uh, which is an acoustic simulation, and it also has a like spacey kind of effect. And we have the lead one for all your shred needs. And uh, yeah, with or without delay, and that's about it. I uh, really love Fractal Audio, like I uh, have for years. When we were playing the uh, Axefix Ultra, we need the rack unit and we need and a the pedal, pedal to control the rack. And now all we need is a pedal bolt. So that was the reason why we went with that. Yeah. So the AX8 is pretty much the Axefix 2, but compressed down into the AX8 pedal board. Like it doesn't have everything that the Axefix 2 has, but it's got everything that we need to play live. Yeah. Yeah. Even for recording at home, you know. That's all I'm going to do. Plug that into my interface and record. Because that's what I was doing with the uh, Axefix Ultra. And yeah, so totally road proof, well built. Very happy with that. So as far as the sound goes, that beautiful cable here uh, runs into our in-ear unit down there, which we hide wherever we can on stage, usually next to our drum machine right there. and. From here, everything gets treated through that, which is a Mackie DL1608, and that thing ends up on your iPad or iPhone and whatever, and this is how we set our in -ears. You see, we have the list, the bass, we have me, Benji, Matt, Zen, Tim, the violin, everything, and we just do our own levels. It's that simple. We all have our own yeah. band. So A1 I, is I'm me. A, I'm A2. Yeah, A2, that's his mix. Yeah. And really, that's how we uh, hear ourselves every night, because we do not use the wedges. That's another 10 minutes saved yeah. when you need to set up. And uh, yeah, we just use this it. AKG thing for a wireless receiver. And that's it. So I've got the PRS custom 24 7 string, the SE model. Uh, it's a, got a uh, mahogany back, beveled maple top with a maple flame maple veneer, maple neck. Rosewood fretboard with the bird inlays. Uh, the pickups, I've got the SE uh, HFS for the bridge pickup, and the neck pickup is the SE Vintage Bass. Uh, just push pull tone knobs, volume, three way blade switch, any ball strings. Uh, I use 10 to 56, which is yeah, pretty, it's like a regular slinky yeah, standard sort of. I've been uh, playing the PRS guitars for over 10 years now. I started off with a Custom 22, uh, one of the core models, back in 2006 I first got it. Used it to record uh, Portal of Eye and the Aurora Veil and played countless shows with it. And then when we did Citadel, Citadel is a 7 string album and so I needed a 7 string guitar. But the 7 string doesn't come in the core model so I had to switch back to the SE uh, brand of guitars. But they're still great, they feel great, they play great. It's just yeah, very happy with them. If they do bring them out in the core model though, I'll be one of the first ones to get one. <laughs> so yeah, like I pretty much just play only rhythm in Neo. There's a couple of odd solos here and there or lead, lead parts. So predominantly staying on the bridge pickup and using, like, like we showed before, I've got my metal rhythm tone, my clean rhythm tone, and my lead tone, tread tone. That's like I normally use about four effects, but at the moment, we're getting away with the three just because the thing is still so brand new we're still tweaking what we actually need first so 
Uh, I play ESP guitars, so should everyone. Uh, incredible, uh, you know, does ESP need an introduction really? Uh, every single guy who can play guitar went through ESP at one point or another. Uh, that's a full custom Japanese one. Um, it's based on the Horizon 3 model, which is I guess the latest model. Except it's a 7 string, they don't make it 7 string. Left-handed, they don't make it left-handed. Reverse headstock, it doesn't have a reverse headstock. Uh, and a Kalo bridge uh, for my floating because I love floating bridges and I really needed that. So, uh, quilted maple top, uh, mahogany body, um, ebony fret wood, like pretty classic, really. Um, just very efficient, very reliable, and uh, gorgeous. Love it. DSL strap, handles by them as well, just like Matt. It's got our little logo on it. Uh, Simon Duncan, Pegasus and Sentient, the classics, classics. I uh, used to be an uh, active pickup kind of guy, but ever since we switched to that, like we don't really need that much gain anymore, so I chose the definition of the, the gain output these days. Um, it really suits the music, anyway. And for the picks, I've got the Tortex Dunlop uh, USA 114, the super classic one that anybody can buy anywhere, and uh, we're endorsed by then, and they're great. Always, always been using them. Uh, strings, elixir strings, nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, 10, 1056, which is 1049 for the six ones. Your classic 1049, light, light one, I think it, you call it light here. And uh, 56 for the bigger one. The low B. And yeah, classic. So uh, I've had like two electric guitars in my life because I'm left handed. So gear, I don't know what gear is. No idea. It's got to be efficient and fast. Nothing else matters when you're playing live. Um, uh, for about 12 years, all I, all I used is an EFG 707. Uh, I just wanted to play like Churchill Dinner, you know, from Death. So I was like, if you can do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it too. But yeah, I've, I just really like having that option now these days, especially for acoustics and stuff. I, I still play most of my leans on the, uh, the bridge pickup, but if I go really high, yeah, I will switch to the neck one. I'm not too fast. I still really like that, you know. Um, I shake my playing, I would say, around that kind of uh, setup. So I'm, I'm more used to you use the bridge one for leads. Hey guys, I'm Cygnus from the Ebola Viscaris, the bass player. And um, here I have my Diesel VB5. Um, it's custom made for me to my exact specifications by Jeff Kiesel and the crew. Um, elder body, uh, purple heart, neck through. Um, a quilted maple top, it's just a thing of beauty. Um, active pickups with a 19 volt split, uh, 18 volt I mean. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I use colonial leather straps, Australian made, and with my own little addition. <laughs> no picks allowed. Uh, DR strings, I use, I use them exclusively. So yeah. I mean a lot of people think that I play headless basses for the look. I guess that's one component, but mainly I play headless basses because of the, the balance. So the weight's distributed in the middle of the bass. Um, you know, sometimes you have a longer bass and it can lean down when you take your hand off. So um, I find it's just really centered, really easy to play. Um, it's smaller, obviously, so I can fit it into, you know, smaller areas with the guitars. Um, it, it never goes out of tune, that's a huge plus. Like I've taken it all around the world from snow to summer and it stays in tune the whole time, literally. So there's nothing to knock. There's no tuning heads. Uh, we tune it down the bottom here for like a fine tuner ratio. So yeah, it's just, it's like a Ferrari. Yeah. Well, we've just signed with Fractal and I've, I've been using them in Australia and I've just got the new Fractal uh, 2XL Plus. So yeah, I'm very keen to get that set up and start using that. Hi, I'm uh, Troy McCosker. I'm Neo's front of house slash sound slash touring guy slash uh, producer and engineer for their studio albums. Um, I'm here on tour in the States with them. We're just going to run through the live setup really quickly. Uh, with Neo, we keep it really compact and simple. Travelling from Australia, we get weight restrictions and limitations, so I've built a live setup that works for their monitor system that travels around the world quite well. So we run only 16 channels, I keep it simple for, 
festivals and the like, quick changeovers. So we have 16 channels running into our split, which runs into a Mackie DL 1608, which the guys have full control over their in-ear mixes via their iPhones, iPads, whatever works for that. We have the outputs of the Mackie sending to five AKG SST 4500 IEM sender units. Uh, all linked to an SPC 4500 antenna which just boosts the output signal and stops dropouts and we've had that running on massive festival stages and works really well. Um, which it's just great. We set up, we plug in, I run a split to front of house and the guys are ready to go. There's no setup of monitors, no tuning time for any of that we can literally just throw it all on stage everything's in their ears they walk on stage and they go really simple so basically running the Mackie DL1608 with their proprietary software which is the Mackie Master Fader 4 at the moment they've just upgraded so basically every band member has a send one through six and they all get to just choose their send and adjust their levels from there so each person can go through pick their send change their EQs change their levels you know click tracks everything like that running through there as well as kicks guitars everything they need to just set up and get their mix happy it's great there's no monitor engineer involved no extra touring or crew person for the guys to be really happy with their in-ear and monitor mix every night it makes life much easier uh, not really finding the right products um, that fit within our weight limitations of touring. We have a 23 kilo hard limit flying out of Australia on most airlines, so I had to get custom built cases to house everything and go through a whole bunch of different options trying to find the smallest, lightest, most compact options for this um, that would do everything we needed and we sort of got lucky with the Mackie, I was a little skeptical at first, but it's done about 150 shows now and it's been pretty flawless all the way through, so pretty happy with that and pretty happy the way it's all come together and worked throughout the last world tour.